And let's go out to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and talk to Jenna. Jenna, what's up, Jenna? Hi, hi, Doctor Delonia. I am a little bit nervous, but thank you so much for taking my call. I'm super nervous. I don't know anybody from from South Dakota. It feels. It just <laughs> sounds cold. It's. It is yesterday, but yesterday. So yesterday was like 13 degrees as a high, but on Monday it was 64. I want to say. As a high that's, for the day, so we don't know what we're doing up here. Yeah, that just sounds like pneumonia, USA. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you're surviving. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I, we, clearly you are surviving. I'm glad that you're doing well. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so what's so, up? Yeah, um, I will kind of get into a little bit of background, and then I'll phrase my question, and then we can go from there. So Cool. Um, I guess, so starting with, so I'm a, single woman. I live alone. I, um, have been a men's hairstylist for almost four years now. And, um, I decided last 2022, I wasn't happy with my career path and I decided to go back to school and go finish my nursing degree. And I graduate in May and I'm super, super excited. Um, and before I went back to school, I had just gotten out of a really, really toxic relationship and it started working at a salon and um, some of the girls were on OnlyFans and they were telling me about how much extra money they were making. It sounded like a really, really good idea. I was single at the time and so I went on OnlyFans and it did not last long. I immediately felt super guilty um, I was only on there a couple of weeks and, um, I deleted it and I, I got off of it, but, um, I now have been single for the last two years and I just, I still feel so guilty that I even was tempted to go on there and that I even thought it was a good idea. And so I guess, how do I navigate that guilt so that I can be a good partner for when I do actually like meet someone and settle down. Man. Um, there's so, there's so much here. You and I could hang out for a while, right? Right. Um, I hope this isn't weird, but I just like you. You seem like somebody that I would want to hang out with. Not in a romantic way. I'm, I'm an old married man, but <laughs> um, I don't meet a lot of self-aware people <laughs> anymore, especially Kelly, but I don't meet a lot of self-aware <laughs> people anymore. And a lot of people who are able to say, here's what I want to do. I'm going to make it happen even when it's hard. And by the way, here's some really stupid things I've done that violated. Here's the deal. At the end of the day, it violated my belief in who I thought I was. And I hate that I did that. And here we are. Like that, that's a rare combination. So good on you. Thank you. Good on you. Thank you. Um, beneath all of it, you feel it. And I think you've probably felt this before OnlyFans. Tell me if I'm wrong, but you have this like ticker tape running through your life. Like under the movie that's your life, the little news reel at the bottom is that you're unlovable. Where does that come from? Gosh, I... Really? If, if, if feel free to tell me, no, you're an idiot. That's not true. <laughs> but here, here, here's why, um, here's uh, just for the audience. Uh, here's what, uh, wh how I'm putting the dots together here. Number one, listening to you talk about your decision to do only fans and listening to you talk about your job as a barber, which in, for me is a place that I go to just drop my shoulders and have like real one of the only places in the world where I have real communication. My, my barber Daniel is the guy I love, but it's a place where it, it gives me peace. And to listen to you talk about your lack of, you didn't like that person. And so now you're going to nursing school and the way you're communicating about, I need to do these things so that one day somebody will be okay with me. That tells me that underneath all of it, you find Jenna unlovable. Yeah, I Where does that story never come thought from? of it that way. Where does that come from? 
I've never thought about that, honestly. I come from a two-parent household. I Both my parents were great. I still have a great relationship with both my mom and dad. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost my dad two years ago to cancer, which... So he, he, my dad passed and then, and then I was working in the, in the salon and then I decided to go on OnlyFans. So I really, I don't know. I, <laughs> I've had a string of crappy boyfriends. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes our parents really, are amazing and we date somebody and they just, um, I've talked about this publicly. I've, I've, I've got some things that are lodged in my soul that, I even think well-meaning girlfriends over the years have said, and it's just stuck with me in a way that has altered my behavior to such a degree that it, it, it will alter how my kids live. You know what I mean? Like it just, so yeah, your parents can be amazing and you can subtly or very like directly get the message from romantic partners. Like you're not that yeah. good at, at love. We have to yeah. work really hard to be in relationship with you. You're kind of less than. Yeah. Right. That message can come there too. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that if that means anything to you. It does. Well, and it was funny because my, my mom knows everything and I'm smiling. How did that conversation go? Uh, not, well, <laughs> mostly because she was, it was sprung on her. It, it was not meant, I, I never wanted my mom to know about that, but then she did. And she kind of went down a rabbit hole, rightfully so, because she questioned her parenting and of she's course. like, I failed you. Of course. Which I get, I, I love my mother something awful but um yeah she she definitely went down a rabbit hole and so that was not a fun conversation but we're 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 you know we've moved on times past and it's you know it's not like she doesn't still love me as her daughter was it was it your was it your job to sing and dance to perform for mom make sure she was okay oh yeah okay Your mom can be a, an oh, yeah. amazing woman who loves you and you love her and who also hitched the entire uh, performance of the household onto your tiny little 12-year-old shoulders. And that was too much. Yeah. That was too much. Yeah. And when I say you feel unlovable, a better way to say that is um, you you are worth being loved if you're performing up to snuff and now that story it's become a part of your nervous system the story got disrupted because you did something that violated one of your core values and now you think oh i could never perform well enough to achieve that thing i've been trying to achieve my whole life and that is to have somebody look at me and hold my face and say that they love me and mean it and i need you to hear me say that's not true It's not true. Okay. So, um, before we got on, they, uh, before we got on the air, we were just talking privately, um, me and Kelly and the gang back there. And I've got some things that I've, I've done. I, I have a few things I've said to people over the years, like all the way up to middle school, high school, things I've done that like haunt me. I hate it. I hate that that person has a thought of John Deloney and they remember that. And, I guess the good news is I've taken those things and learned from them the best I could. Like I used to be such an insane liar. I lied all the time about everything. I used to steal all the time. I used to like fill in the blank, man. I was just a punk kid. And now I'm almost pathological about telling the truth. Insanely so. I'm so insanely about, it's so insane about not picking up something that's not mine. Like crazy. So, so, in many ways, your experience crossing your own boundary will reinforce the fact that Jenna will never do that again. Fair? Right. And 
I'm still haunted by it sometimes. And I think for you, making peace with, whew, I'm pretty awesome. I've accomplished a great thing. I took myself back to nursing school. I knocked it out. I've been um, buried by the sudden death of my dad. And I'm coming back out of that fog. I've repaired some things with my mom. Um, I'm going to have a great job. I'm going to be around a bunch of smoking hot nurse practitioners. So game on, right? Like all the things, right? Um, all that's true. And you've learned when someone's like, hey, um, can you go get me an extra prescription of Adderall or Xanax? Cause I, and you, you'll go, nope. <laughs> I've crossed my boundaries before. It ain't happening. So that stuff's good. And one day you're going to have to sit down with somebody and you're going to have some significant romantic interest in them. And you're going to say, I spent a few weeks on OnlyFans once and their eyes will get humongous. Or they, maybe, maybe they'll be like, oh man, was that crazy? Or they may say, I'm out. And that's the risk of any relationship, right? Right. What have you learned about yourself in the process? I, gosh, I learned that I am terrible in front of an internet audience. <laughs> um, uh, I was me about too, it, Jenna. Me too. Laugh. <laughs> um, I learned that not ever, different opportunities are not always what what people make it out to be. Like, for example, because like my coworker brought that to my attention and told me all of her wonderful positive experiences on there, and I I genuinely believed. I genuinely believed her and I didn't, I didn't do the research behind it. So I, I learned that, that you know, you kind of got to do some research on some things and then, um, yeah. So there's, would, a, there's a ton be, for, for those wondering, there's a ton of exaggeration going on in the only fans market. Yes. You make all of this. It's not true. Like any industry, there's a few people that make a bunch of money and there's yeah. some people that do. Okay. And then there's mm -hmm. a bajillion people who are throwing things up all day long and they make nothing. Right. And then the internet has them, right? Forever. Yeah. Whew. And hear me say, in no way does that disqualify you from being loved, from being a great mom, from being an amazing wife someday. At all. In fact, I think it can make you highly compassionate towards a young daughter you're going to have someday who thinks that she's got to like perform for you. And you're going to say, nope, not in my house. I believe you and I love you all the time. Is that fair? Yeah, it is. Have you written 2021, Jenna, a letter? Telling no, her? No, I have not. You need to do that. Because she's, she's, I, she's up in front of your face every single day asking you, do you forgive me? Do you forgive me? Do you forgive me? And you're trying to ignore her, and she's just going to get louder and louder and louder. Mm -hmm. At some point, you need to write her a letter that says, I forgive you, and I still love you. Can you do that? 21 Jenna was, yeah. 21 Jenna was what? I was going to say 2021 Jenna was just trying to do the right thing and was just trying to get over her the, the grief of yeah. my dad the best I could. She was in a fog. Yeah. Yeah. And 2024 Jenna is on a war path to go be a nurse and go <laughs> keep people alive. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes. So here's, here's the script moving forward. And I wish it was more complex than this. It's just going to be something you have to practice and no is going to show up. And I think guilt and sometimes the things we're ashamed about that we've done. I think a lot of the, the challenge with dealing with that moving forward five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road is that we are caught off guard that it still shows up. And it's like when you're driving down the road, if you think every driver is a great driver and somebody cuts you off, it like it's the end of time. Oh my! But if you're driving down 
town in a city and people are cutting you off, you're just calm about it. It's in the Rito because that's just how people drive down here, right? Mm -hmm. So knowing I'm good and I'm worth being loved and I'm going to make somebody really, really happy as a partner one day. I'm going to make myself really happy. I'm going to be a great nurse. And I've done some really hard stuff in my life. And there's going to be random times when you're just going to feel super vulnerable and exposed because there's compromising photos of you floating around somewhere buried in the recesses of the internet, right? And you'll go, ah! Yeah. And then you can exhale and go, that was dumb. But I'm good now. I didn't want to be there. I'm good now. I learned a lesson. I'm good now. Is that fair? Yeah. All your body's trying to do is to recall to keep you safe. Remember that time you did this? And so all we're doing in the present and moving forward is letting our body know, yeah, I know. And it will never happen again. And it's not going to happen again. And again, I want you to hear me say this isn't about, you know, <laughs> you awkwardly like dancing in front of an internet camera. This is about you having a set of operating principles and about how you navigate the world and in a moment of exhaustion and weakness and grief you let a coworker talk you into something they didn't talk you into it you're a grown up you, you I mean you did it but they painted a picture of a situation and uh you fell for it you went for it yeah all right so no more say out loud Jen is a pretty amazing woman Jenna's a pretty amazing woman. And Jenna's worth being loved. Jenna's worth being loved. Do you believe that? Yes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I wish you the absolute best. Congratulations. Send us a uh, graduation um, announcement. I won't buy you anything, but Kelly is known for sending out thousands of dollars to graduates. That's not true at all, actually. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Kelly. She doesn't have that kind of money. Um Man, I'm getting off the rails here. And I see how awesome you're staring at me. Kelly, you're beautiful. And Jenna, you're amazing.